eats like a meal. It has lots of protein from the chicken, tons of great like crunch elements. I've got some spicy peanuts going on, a beautiful soy chili vinaigrette and vermicelli noodles, rice noodles. Um, that soak it all up and build out this gorgeous noodle bowl. It uh, definitely is something that I feel like has infiltrated my subconscious through TikTok. I feel like I see all these gorgeous looking noodle bowls um, and I wanted to make my version. with like I went heavy on the lime here, I went heavy on the acid. I feel like it is a really bright and vibrant um, and very filling bowl. We're gonna poach some chicken first and this is a great technique to have. You can make lots of chicken breasts all at once at the start of the week, it's really flavorful. And then you have it to shred into chicken salad or toss over salads like we're doing here, add to soups, layer on a sandwich with a little chipotle aioli, do it up. Um, and poaching is basically boiling with some beautiful flavoring elements in the water that we're gonna boil in. In our case, we're going to flavor our poaching liquid with some peppercorns, a little fresh lime juice, some ginger. Okay, so let's get started with that. Grab a medium saucepan. You don't want it to be too big because you don't need it to be. And boiling water this is the only part of this recipe that really takes any time. So don't go bigger than you have to. Um, add your chicken breast, boneless, skinless chicken breast to the base of this pan and we're gonna cover it with cold water just about an inch over the surface of the chicken. So right about there. So it's completely submerged about an inch over top and turn that over a high heat and we'll add in our flavoring elements which will be a little pinch of black peppercorns and some lime juice which helps to tenderize the chicken for sure but also adds lots of nice flavor because look let's face it chicken breast not the most flavorful protein under the sun um but because it isn't and because it's such a neutral it can take on pretty much any flavor we want it to have so i like adding in that little hit of tart acidity even now we'll do the juice here so i am going to use the juice of one whole lime here and i'm using my little fork method because although this is actually quite a juicy lime, which is lovely because sometimes you get them and they're so dry and it's such a letdown. But if you feel like there's juice that's just like locked in the inside, take your fork and stab it into the center of your citrus and then just wiggle the fork and the citrus back and forth and it will release any last little bit of limey goodness. I'm also going to add some fresh ginger and this is a great way to sort of subtly hint at the vinaigrette that is to come and to start to give our um, chicken some of that flavoring right up front. So I just sort of peel off the bigger end pieces and then just use my spoon to quickly peel away that thin skin, the outer layer. And this you don't have to be super precise about because all of this poaching liquid is going to get strained away. It's really just there too provide a fragrant bath for our chicken. Um, once you have it peeled, I'll just go ahead and slice it thin so that um, you maximize the amount of water that can touch wonderfully juicy, vibrant ginger into the water. And I'm leaving this uncovered. I'm gonna have it come up to a boil. Once it hits the boil, which may take like 12, 15 minutes, then I will drop it down to a simmer Flip the chicken over, cap it, and let it hang out like eight to 10 minutes. The chicken will cook all the way through. We will let it cool, and then we will shred it up and add it to our delicious salad. While our chicken is poaching, we will get started on our roasty, toasty, crunchy, spicy peanuts, which are absolutely essential to this dish. But if you don't like peanuts or can't have them, um, sesame seeds work really well. You could leave them off, but I highly recommend you don't because the rich, fatty crunch and texture that they provide really like nails. Otherwise the, the meal is really light. It's like all veggies, all crunchy green things, some nice poached chicken. We need this to make it all feel balanced. Okay, so we're gonna toast them in a skillet and I also put a pot of water on to boil for our vermicelli, our rice noodles. We're gonna get our pan um, going over a medium heat. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of avocado oil here and about a tablespoon of a garlic chili paste. And this can be sambal olek, it can be gochujang, it could be sriracha. Um, just something with a nice bit of heat to it, a tiny touch of sweetness, and just sort of swirl these ingredients together. And as that comes up to heat, I'll add about a half cup 
of dry roasted peanuts in. They won't need to spend very much time in the pan to end up with that sort of toasty taste. Uh, especially important because the uh, chili paste will caramelize and thicken and gloss them and then it will burn if you leave it on too long. So this is only gonna stay in the pan a couple minutes, three, four minutes. Um, if you were using raw peanuts, I would toast them in the oven first and then finish them in this lovely toasting experience. Just a little bit of salt here because we want these to hit all the flavor marks. And sort of just let those hang out. See, look at them moving right there. I feel like I could have a little bit more chili paste just for fun. Okay, so this is why you don't wanna leave the peanuts running too long because the sauce will start to look like that. I've gotten these charred in places. They are wonderful and coated with our chili sauce. I'm just gonna spread them out now so they don't steam. I've taken them off the heat and those will continue to crisp until we are ready to use them to top our salad. They also make a very delicious snack, I will say. Okay, so while we wait for the chicken to come up to a soft, gentle boil, um, let's get started on the veg. I'm gonna actually cut like three to four carrots up. I like this dish to be, obviously it's a noodle bowl, so we're gonna have those wonderful soft rice noodles, vermicelli, but I kind of like to have the veg almost mirror the noodle experience of, um, of those and just build out the bowl even more and it makes it obviously very colorful. The carrots bring a lot of sweetness, the cucumbers or zucchini bring a lot of juiciness. Um, if you have a spiralizer, love to do that for the zucchini um, and make it like zucchini noodles. And then you can really get away with like half vermicelli, half zucchini noodles, and then you win. <laughs> um, but if you don't, you can just cut the veg into beautiful matchsticks, um, which make for a really lovely crunchy addition. I am actually sitting here with my vegetable peeler looking at how lovely and noodly the peels were and thinking I might just peel the heck out of my carrots and make ribbons to add to my noodle bowl. What do you think? Good idea? Good plan? <laughs> Good stuff. And I'm just sort of rotating my carrots so that I get these lovely ribbons as I go. And then eventually you're at that very, well not very, but sort of more bitter core of the carrot. And you can leave that off or eat it on its own. But what you're left with is these, are these lovely ribbons. The chicken is at a soft boil. I am just going to skim off this little bit of foam on top. And then we cut the heat, flip the chicken breasts over, cap the pot. And actually just give it, I give it a little swirl anyway, just to make sure that the ginger and peppercorns are distributing cap the pot and let this hang out about eight minutes and we should have lovely, juicy, perfectly cooked chicken breasts poached and ready to go. We'll take them out of the water, let them cool, and then we will shred them up for our salad. Meanwhile, look at our mountain of beautiful carrot ribbons. How lovely. Um, and I think for a little, I think now I will want a little bit of crunch to go with the peanuts. So I'm going to use Persian cucumbers, baby cucumbers, um, uh, obviously English cucumbers work really well too, but I think that these little guys have so much crunch and texture on them um, and still plenty of juiciness. And I'm just gonna put these into lovely little half moons, not too thin. Um, I want them to provide texture, but I think somewhere between too thick and too thin is important because you also don't want them to be like gnarly big hunks of cucumber. We want delicate, <laughs> delicate, crunchy, hydrating. Loveliness. So I think the perfect width, if you can be extra crazy about it, <laughs> is this wide. <laughs> and not this wide, which is too wide. Okay. Maybe, how many cucumbers do I need? Three? Let's do three. Cucumbers and carrots are ready to go. Let's just mince up a few scallions um, so we have these ready to go too. Then we'll build our vinaigrette last um, before we add the noodles to the pot to get lovely and soft. Um, scallions, obviously, adding their wonderful oniony sweetness and bite, um, pop a green. You could use chives, you could use shallots, but scallions really are the, the, the move here, if you can find them. Um, 
I am just peeling away the outermost layer because it's slippery and can create problems with your knife and often is the only like part that's sort of holding on to silt or dirt of any kind. So we just get rid of that. And then just because this is being served in a, in a beautiful composed salad, I am gonna slice these on a bias so that we get beautiful diagonal long little tendrils of scallion to scatter over our salad. I'm just sort of holding them firmly onto the board and then moving my knife in a diagonal motion to get these beautiful sort of oval shapes. Last but not least, let's build ourselves some vinaigrette. Um, for this, I'm going to really highlight, again, some of the sweet, spicy deliciousness of our, of our chili garlic sauce. About a quarter cup of that. I want the juice of at least one lime, maybe two. We shall see. Grab your little fork and do our trick. You can also add a little vinegar if you feel like you want it punchier than the lime juice creates, but... Let's start here and see where we go. That is the beauty of making your own dressing. You can really customize it to exactly the feature of this mix that you love. I'm just moving my scallions to the side so that I can use this cutting board. We are going to add some ginger in here, of course. Um, probably about two inches of ginger will end up being plenty, but I also have my little peeler out here, so I might as well use that. Once your ginger is lovely and peeled like so, just run it along the microplane to extract all that yummy fresh ginger juice. And don't be a superhero, guys. Once it gets a little bit tricky to hold on to, I'm sure it is enough ginger. And let me tell you from experience that grating can go wrong if you don't stop early enough. Um, don't leave behind whatever is underneath here. Just kind of scrape it with your fork, shake it in. Give that a little whisk. Now let's grab some tamari sauce and a little avocado oil here too. I'm using avocado oil because it's more of a neutral oil so it won't get in the way of the other elements of this dressing really shining through. The tamari bringing lots of salty goodness. Ooh. Oh wow. Delicious, delightful. Um, you know what I, ooh very you know the the lime juice really like punches it all up and the chili garlic sauce also has a little bit of its own vinegar it's sort of a fermented taste delightful um i do want like a little bit of date syrup or honey either one works great and i want garlic i feel like it needs a garlic clove i mean we're talking like a teaspoon of date syrup or honey if you have that instead just to add a little bit of sweetness here um and Get a garlic clove, just one should be plenty. And you are gonna have the scallions in this mix, so if you don't feel like adding the garlic, it's not a big deal, but sometimes I feel like even just smashing a clove, peeling it and tossing it in, then you can retrieve it and fish it out before you serve, adds just like a little scent of garlic that's quite nice. We'll go ahead and pop it out of its skin there, and you can just use the same microplane get it into your bowl. <clears throat> Why am I speaking so quietly? <laughs> to get it into your bowl. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Oh, that is delicious. Okay. Tiny splash more avocado oil just because we went heavy on the vinegar and other flavoring elements. Um, the chicken is poached to perfection. Timing has elapsed. Grab them out of the water and set them over here just to cool and then we will shred them and enjoy them. Okay, our dressing is ready, our peanuts are ready. Let's just drop our vermicelli, these very skinny, lovely looking rice noodles. And we will drop a pack of these into a pot of boiling water and they cook up really fast. Water is boiling. Get yourself a lovely skein of rice noodles. Super thin, very fine, almost like even thinner than angel hair pasta. And we're gonna drop these into our pot of boiling water. You may actually have to break them to do so, which is fine because you do want them fully submerged. So 
There you go, lovely. Turn off the heat. We're gonna let our noodles hang out in the hot water. Off the heat now for two to three minutes. We'll go in there with a fork, break them apart so they're lovely and silken and flowing together. Then we drain them and rinse under cold water and they'll be ready to use to build out this beautiful noodle bowl. While the noodles are steaming away in there, I'm going to use this time to shred up our chicken, which should be just cool enough to handle. Um, you can do it with your hands, but it's also really easy just to pull this beautiful poached chicken apart with a fork. So you get these great sizable looking hunks of perfectly cooked chicken. Look at how juicy that looks, by the way. And like I said, it's a knowing how to poach chicken, you'll find that you're using it all the time. You can make big batches of this stuff and have it ready for green bowls or soups or salads, um, throw it into quesadillas, add it to sandwiches. It's just lovely and light and juicy. And because of the flavoring elements we added to scent our poaching liquid, it's also super flavorful. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I will say, poaching does not yield like the texture of a roast or a um, even a braised chicken, for instance, because it's just been cooked in water. But it has this wonderfully absorbent ability to take on whatever flavors you add to it. So when we pour our dressing over top, poached chicken is really going to come in very handy. All right, let's build our bowl. Okay, come see the noodles. They have been delicately steaming away just just soothing themselves in this hot liquid they are beautiful and soft now i am going to grab my sieve and drain them and rinse them just so they don't stick together mm -hmm. also helps to cool them down a little bit all right we can build our noodle bowl get a pretty bowl you know, I don't like when my noodles are watery, so I am just going to give them a second to dry. Maybe speed along that process, because I don't want to make you wait. Just playing with our food. <laughs> and just give them a second. Okay, nice. Okay, so we have our lovely bed of noodles. We can arrange our shredded chicken over top. And you can, I mean, it, it's totally up to you if you choose to pocket your ingredients and kind of create that little kaleidoscope effect, which is so pretty, or if you wanna scatter it all over top, you totally could too. Um, nice little pile of carrots here, fresh and sweet and crunchy and vibrant. A handful of crisp, perfectly sliced cucumbers. Um, now is our time to add a little bit of fresh herbs. Got to have mint on this bowl. It's an absolute must. Plenty of times I have just torn the mint leaves and scattered them over top and it's lovely. But in a perfect world, which we're making happen today, um, I want to thinly slice the mint so that I get little tiny tendrils of it scattered throughout instead of big bites of mint in some places and no mint in others. Grab knife and I just sort of roll the leaves together kind of like a cigar and then just thinly slice these ribbons and while we are getting ready for garnishes I'm also going to chop a few of these now beautifully candied crunchy peanuts you don't have to mm. talk about like a phenomenally sweet savory rich delicious snack you do not have to chop these you can totally just scatter them whole over top which i love but again as maybe you can tell i want a perfect bite with every bite which means every bite needs to have a little mint a little peanut a little of all these flavors and so i find chopping them up just helps them scatter better scatter with your peanuts over top a little fresh mint over top how about cilantro we need a little bit of you in here and i think cilantro can just be beautiful torn fresh leaves here very pungent and aromatic and green and fresh tasting and you guys know i was not a fan of cilantro for a long time but i've come around for very specific uses like this one <laughs> it does it adds quite a lot and actually if the stems are beautiful which they are on this guy 
you can also get your little mince practice in and scatter a bit of that texture over top. Oh yeah. And last but not least, some scallions. My goodness. And then our gorgeous dressing. Ooh. Oops. I kind of like to drizzle around the edges um, and that way it makes it really easy when you're tossing the uh, ingredients together to make sure that every little piece is getting a coating of your dressing without anything being drenched by it. That looks beautiful to me. All right, let's give it a toss and then give it a taste. Wow. I mean, it smells so fresh and fragrant. All that yummy chili and garlic. Fresh veg, beautiful noodles here to soak up some vinaigrette. Okay, hold the phone. Okay. Mm. All that yummy poached chicken coming through. And I'm glad we went with the um, tendrils of carrot. I feel like that was an important step to making sure that we really get a flavor of everything in every bite. Let's taste this damn thing. Ah. It is beautiful. You can twirl your noodles and your carrots and then stab a little crunchy cucumber on the bottom. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Don't forget that chicken. Mm. Mm. That chicken brought with it so much delicious dressing a little bit of scallion, a pop of those spicy, crunchy peanuts. These noodles were born to be slurped in soups and slathered in salad dressings. They really hold incredible texture. They are so fresh tasting with the vegetables. I love that pop of green mint and cilantro even. One thing to note, because so many people in my family are vegetarians, if you feel like skipping the chicken, skip the chicken. This is a gorgeous, hearty, filling vegetarian bowl all on its own. You won't miss the chicken at all if you choose not to have it, but if you want a little bit of a protein boost, it's delicious. So if you are looking to spice up your noodle game with something that is bright and vibrant and crunchy and juicy with staying power because of all that protein from the chicken and the peanuts and that wonderful dressing and all these veg, then you're in luck and you should take a walk on the Thai style noodle bowl side of life.